Well, <clears throat> hello everyone. <clears throat> it's uh, Frank here, and I just want to apologise first and foremost that we weren't able to have the normal call tonight on TalkShoe, and that was due to some difficulties this um, Thursday, the 10th of February. But I would like to thank all of you that um, do come back and have a listen to this um, shorter monologue tonight on some of the important issues that I, I know a number of you are raising, and also to share with you some of the latest information that I was hoping to share with you tonight. Next week, we are planning to make the regular time for the calls Wednesday night instead of Thursday night. So you will see on University of Eucadia, <clears throat> that is um, uh, university.eucadia.info, you will see that the calls from next week onwards will be um, Wednesday the 16th, then Wednesday the 23rd, and then March the 2nd Wednesday. And uh, we do this because uh, there's some other great calls happening in the, in the week. And, and talking to a number of you, Wednesday seems to be a better day. Well, tonight I want to talk to you about the updates on one-heaven.org on how to save your home and the progress of the work on that section. But before we get into it, I just want to cover a couple of things that has been happening this week, and I know that it is now increasing uh, with a number of you in conversations and with blogs and with others. In a growing uncertainty, questioning, concern, doubt that appears to be emerging on the fringes from both innocent questioning and uncertainty of some of the spiritual questions relating to Eucadia and One Heaven, but also from very specific and direct attacks that are being done underhanded without really the obvious hand uh, of those that are doing it. So I want to address that because this comes back to something that we put up on the website under FAQ, and I'm referring to one-heaven.org FAQ, the 20 biggest lies against One Heaven in Eucadia. Anyone that has an opinion has an absolute right to have that opinion. If, if I was to say to you, I don't agree with you, that's my opinion. An opinion is absolutely entitled, and anyone in reading anything that is written on Eucadia, One Heaven, is perfectly entitled to their opinion. In fact, they're perfectly entitled to share their opinion. It's why when people want to write about blogs and don't, don't agree, these are to be encouraged. Dissent is, is something to learn. Whenever someone criticises, this is a good thing. In fact, criticism is one of the key things that has developed and improved the information that I'm sharing with you tonight. And hopefully, in 10 months' time, when I have moved on and, and the conveyance of what we're doing has been um, brought through to the communities, to you and those that are working with you, it's going to be criticism and debate and that constant constructive uh, engagement that's going to improve what is a model after all. It's an idea. It's not a religion. It's not a cult. It's not a faith. It's an idea. Yes, it carries some significant spiritual aspects to it, but it is nonetheless an idea. So opinions are to be encouraged and respected Absolutely. But there is a quantum difference between an opinion and a spin propaganda, or as we say here, an out and out lie. What a lie seeks to do is it seeks to take parts of information and through misrepresentation, use those parts to support an assumption, presumption, claim or belief that has absolutely no basis. That is a lie. That is a misrepresentation. 
So the reason I make that distinction is that what has been happening in the last week from a number of quarters is that you have a number of people deliberately lying about information on Eucadia and also specifically on One Heaven. And what I'm referring to, if we go through some of those things, the one that probably is the most topic at the moment, the most topical, is the question of elements like the Treaty of Lucifer, for example. Uh, Article 47 of the Covenant has, as one of the treaties within it, of one of the 144 articles of the covenant, a treaty. And on that page, if one cares to read it, it states categorically that for the first time, there is a realignment of what we would traditionally call the forces of evil and the forces of good, so that there is no distinction anymore between angels and demons between light and dark spiritually. All that's left is the differences in the temporal realm between people who are waking up, people who are wishing to become competent, and those that are suffering various levels of mental illness. What I'm referring to is the draining of the swamp and the end of the veil that has been used for far too long, where groups of people have claimed some supernatural powers and hidden behind the cloak of evil while publicly pretending to be good. They have used this technique for far too long. Now, one of the things that people argue is, how would Franco Collins have any authority to write these things? I am a writer. I am a scribe. I do not claim to be anything else but a man. And I've said this over and over and over again. Yes, there is a family history. There is a history. There's a provenance, of course. But I'm a man. And what I'm presenting to you are ideas. Now, if you think this is wrong, I refer to you stories such as the story of the talents in the New Testament. If one is given the ability to do something, the talent to do something, and doesn't use it, what does the parable teach us? It teaches that that is not a pleasing thing to the divine creator. To have the opportunity to be competent and to change. So if people find offensive that we are now starting to stand up and assert our rights, and no longer allow these kinds of divisions to separate us, then really that is their problem, not ours. But if you read Eucadia, if you take the time to read it, it is self-evident that it is about healing. It is about challenging those that assert a divine right. It is about our own divinity, each and every one of us. It is about ending the concept of one being a Messiah because all of us have the ability to redeem ourselves. And so those that wish to hide behind lies and misinformation eventually will be sound out and found out if we stand our ground and say, regardless of Eucadia, regardless, I now know who I am, I now know what I am, and I will not be allowed or be beguiled or tricked again into being a slave, into being misinformed, into being tricked. And if Eucadia helps someone on that journey, then it's good. So information and knowledge is the thing. So I, I, I know I've emphasised those points now enough. But I just say, I know that that is concern of a number, and I know that that will only increase because there are many who don't want you to become competent. And many of those, unfortunately, sit not just in positions of power, but they sit in positions of the truth movement as well. Now, onwards to talking about land. 
This is an area uh, when you go to one-heaven.org and you look at the home page, there's a new section there called How to Save Your Home. This is a section I've promised would be ready. It's still work in progress, and I'm sorry that it's not all fully there yet. However, what is there when you go to one-heaven.org and you have a look? When you click on the purple box, How to Save Your Home, you'll see that already there the structure of it is in place and the history of land is in place. Now, for the remainder of this call, I want to go through a number of things that we have uncovered in doing this research and the importance of doing this research to benefit you. So the first and foremost that I want to cover is, is the importance of understanding the history of land and the provenance of ideas of land. And so I am referring at the moment to the article introduction. The concept of a mortgage didn't start 10 years ago. It didn't start 50 years ago. The concept of possession didn't appear 200 years ago or 400 years ago. The concept of tenancy and being a tenant didn't appear 800 years ago or even 900 years ago. It was much older. The concept of surveying didn't appear 1,000 years ago or 1,500 years ago or the concept of occupation didn't appear 2,000 years ago. It is even older than that. In other words, when we are trying to save our home and we're moving forward to deal with the private bar of the private guild with their private laws, we need to recognise that land systems have been around for a lot, lot longer than the bar has. And that even though they overlay their forms, their rituals, their procedures, their tricks and their lies, it still is based on principles of law that make it lawful and make it work. Now, this is exactly the same as the challenges that we're dealing with when we discuss the challenging of the slave roles in the using of the ecclesiastical deeds. Although in this case, we're dealing with land. When we deal with ourselves, we're dealing with personal property. When we're dealing with land, we're dealing with real property. So there are many people, and it turns out a number of those people are behind the campaigns of lies at the moment because they feel threatened by the idea of free information. Information given without an agenda threatens their existence. But we are talking about the key to saving our home rests in the knowledge of land law, history of land and property law, and those things that are fundamental to continuing the land system today in making it lawful. Now, I have written this, and I know a number of people will probably question this as well, and say, this is all fine to talk this way, to talk in these, these, these high tones, but when you get down to it, the Bar Society does whatever it likes. You can argue all you like in the court cases. When it comes down to it, if they want to take your home, they'll take it. And that may well be true, and is true, in many states and territories and provinces around the world. But there is a difference between lawful foreclosures and lawful seizure of property and the veil finally being lifted. It's one thing to be dealing with tyrants and pirates that everyone can see naked without any protection of the law, just as we remove the veil of evil from the parasites so they can be seen as nothing more than mentally ill, so we must strain the swamp or we must lift the veil with the bar. So there is no doubt we are dealing with pirates. We're dealing with tyrants. So if that's what it comes down to, that's